Hello again, this is Ash from Cack Minis. Welcome to episode number 5. Today I'm going to be doing some kit bashing. So I went rummaging through one of my bit boxes looking for something I could use for the next project after the last one failed on me. And I found this head. And uh, to give me an idea for a drawing. While you look at my lovely artwork, I'd like to apologise for the big delay in th from this video from the last. I did have something that I wanted to put in between, but it just didn't work. Let's get cracking. Oh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this video or my other videos and you're on this one after finding them. So I'm going to make a chest, uh, torso with the uh, chest piece and head from this Stormcast Eternal and Mark III Power Armor. I'm not sure what set this from, it's just in the bits box. So I had to do some chopping and cutting just to thin everything down a little so it'd fit all together cohesively. So uh, when I came up with an idea for anything, so like kit bash or terrain piece, I tend to just find one thing that... Uh, gives me an idea and then I try and work out the stages of what I'm gonna do for that idea in my head and then as I start building it I completely change my mind because uh, just what I'm like uh, like originally I was gonna use an armature wire to and then put the plastic pieces on top of it like in the last one when I made like uh, a clay base and then added onto it but with wire and then I realized I'm not making this out of beads so the wire sort of moot is it like a moot point because I can just glue things onto other things. Not that there's anything wrong with uh, making miniatures out of beads, like it's just for this piece in particular, that system didn't work. They tend to seem to work better for just robots. I mean, I might be able to do some sort of robot human hybrid with beads and plastic bits from models, but that's for a future video, I guess. I mean, that's actually not a bad idea. I might use that in a future video. Uh, watch this space, I guess. Bombs from War Games Atlantic set. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the set's called. Or I just know that they were the perfect scale for what I needed. And they had that cool little revolver, and one of them was metal. Well, a metal arm made from plastic. For the backpack, I used uh, a piece from Robo Gear. I'm not sure if you ever heard it from the like, early 2000s or something. Anyway, it was like one of the first model kits I ever got. It was this big, massive, like, you've actually got two armies in there to start playing with. And it's just fantastic for kit bashing. Just some of the parts in it are great. I may as well just show you the box, you know, like, the power of editing. Because huh. I've got it here, so, yeah. There you go, it's on your screen. And there's that little spider thing that was holding in the scene before it. So, cool stuff. I'm going to definitely be using more parts of it in future videos because just how versatile the stuff is and I will go into more detail on that in a future video. It's just at the moment I only really needed one piece of it and that was the gun that was on the bottom of the spider thing uh, for a backpack because I wanted to look like exhaust, just like spew black smoke. I used uh, crew rifles for the bases of the legs and some random parts that I had lying around for the uh, upper legs. Uh, I managed to get something that looked like hydraulics for the back one off a 3D printed model that I had lying around. And um, I think it's an old Eldar gun and then just a random piece off something else. But when I'm making things I tend to just do like rule the call so if it looks good doesn't matter whether it's the same as anything else. Also, I tend to make a lot of put on a, like a lot of tactical pockets. 
It just seems to be. I think it's because like I grew up in the nineties, so yeah. I mean, a lot of comic books have tactical pockets, tactical pockets everywhere. Like Cable from X Men. Like if you look at any of his artwork, it's just tactical pockets everywhere. Just every inch of him has a, like a little pocket. Or Batman, like tactical pockets, just everything. There you go, like I said, tactical pockets, love them. Okay, I'm gonna have some little guys pop up on the screen. I did make, I did record making them, but it didn't seem like worth the effort of editing them in because it would have made my video about 25 more minutes long. But they're gonna work for the context of the story that I'm gonna tell in a minute. So I needed to have them make an appearance in some way, otherwise the story wouldn't have made as much sense. Now there you go. There they are, made from uh, War Games Atlantic and Warhammer 40k pieces. I think it's like. Scouts or something, and um, I know the War Games Atlantic stuff is Space Norm, which is a pretty cool set actually. There's some really good, really good stuff in it. This is me gap filling because I forgot to do it beforehand. So, yeah, I think that's brown stuff. I had some lying around. They don't even make that anymore. I'm quite surprised it's still good to use. There's my Xenophil highlight. I don't even know why I do it. It's just I think it's because it looks cool because uh, well, it's paint in layers. It doesn't really make much difference if I use this and a full highlight or not. I just like it looks good when you film it. I may as well start with a bit of backstory about this character, um, rather than you know jumping straight into the story element because it's going to get a bit weirdy otherwise. Uh, so obviously she's just a cyborg. When she was young, she spent most of her time in like the battles of ships and things like that, fixing things. And, uh, made her sick. Give her all sorts of cancer. So she started cutting bits off herself and replacing them with metallic limbs and things like that, and this is where she's ended up. She takes a job on a scrapper ship, at least that's what she was led to believe. Um, but it turns out there wasn't a scrapper ship, it was pirates. She's not happy about it, but she can't do much for now because she's basically just stuck in space on a ship with no way of this kind. She decides to start a plan and try and buy the time to when she can escape by taking over the ship and flying it into controlled space. Uh, so one day, as she's making this plan, a signal was heard and uh, all the pirates are getting excited because they think, ooh, yeah, booty. And uh, anyway, so she's like, yeah, now's the time. And um, she thinks, oh, I'll get a couple of my guys because she's made some friends and we're going to shut down the engines of the ship when they pull in uh, what they've found and take it down section by section. And then the time comes and what they've found gets pulled onto the ship and uh, her plan goes into action. She starts shutting down the engines and going section by section through the ship, dealing with any 
of the pirates, the Shifards. So the first section goes down easy, no fight, no one's there. They're all excited, they're all like heading towards the medical bay to see what they found. And uh, the second section, she, a couple of people, she ends up killing a couple of people. But she's fine with it, she carries on going. And the problems start when she actually gets to medical itself. And she starts hearing screams. And they're not screams that she's causing. I'm going to leave that there and then continue it on, hopefully, in another episode. I don't want to, like, do too much at once. It's all about trying to build the world around them rather than just make the world up and then have them appear in it. Basically, what I'm saying is you're just going to get it in little chunks until i figure out where I want to go with it. Um, Because world building is hard. Like, really hard. I didn't think it'd be this hard. Yeah. Okay. Missed a couple uh, sections out when I was recording. I, I had them, but they were just pictures because I was pressing the wrong thing on my uh, phone when I was filming it. Because that's what I film on. I film on my phone. And uh, yeah, so I missed out doing the wash and then adding, uh, dabbing it with some silver to try and bring out some edges. So I had something to highlight with darker colours later on when I was painting. I'm, I'm going to say something about this. Painting the eyes is like on a model is like the hardest thing I have ever done, especially on this one, because I wanted to make sure the eyebrow was right and everything. At the end, after I finally got the pupils in, I physically was like, "Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god!" And I threw the brush at my hand as soon as I was finished. So if you've made it this far, I'm going to say uh, like and subscribe again, because why not? 
and um, yeah so I got audio in it from this one after a comment last time about me needing maybe something in the background to uh, other dead silences and what I'm going to do for the next episode because it's going to be Halloween based so it should be out before the 30th and uh, I'm going to try and have it so I don't have any gaps so I'll have the background music obviously but it's going to be mostly just me talking so I don't know how much of it's going to be me waffling so if you want to see that I suggest subscribing so you know when that video comes out and to anyone who has already subscribed I want to say thank you having actual people subscribe and basically enjoy my content is like amazing to me that you like my aesthetic all the things that I'm doing so thank you I know the zooming in now is a little bit rough, so I'm going to put some stills at the end just for you to see. Okay. Otherwise, try and enjoy it spinning. <laughs>